because the recording has not started. Okay. Okay, I've I think some technical issue was there. Um, some people actually um, it just said some people will leave because of some technical issue. So I'm not sure. Okay. You can see and hear you well, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I, I just saw the Tarun and someone else also. Uh, it just gave a prompt saying that they will, you know, they'll be leaving the meeting because of some technical issue. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, anyway, okay, I hope that gets sorted. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's continue with the homiletics. We've been looking at biblical preaching, and last class we looked at some of the qualifications. Right. So what is the qualification? We spent a lot of time uh, looking at each of those, um, each of the people whom we, uh, you know, uh, we looked at Stephen. We looked at uh, Philip, um, especially Philip. We looked. We just kind of followed through uh, right from the time he's mentioned, uh, and then you know we looked at Acts chapter twenty-one verse eight, where he's mentioned again. He's in Caesarea, and he's, uh, he's got a family, and his daughters are there in ministry, and so on. So we, um, you know, we looked at that uh, as well. Um, um then for when we when we looked at the qualifications right when we looked at um uh, the qualifications of a person who's to be a preacher or to be a communicator of truth um the first thing was you know we we looked at several things and the first thing was that they need to be born again Okay, they can, obviously they cannot be born again, and if they are not born again, then they're not going to receive things of the spirit. Okay, um, that's another thing. You know, uh, uh, they need to be born again. But you know, because of the way uh, church kind of unfolded, you know, uh, we know that church uh, became a feeble entity in the dark ages, and then the restorative moves of God, and we we see that you know, in certain Let's say, how do I say it? In certain circles, in certain, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain uh, places where there are churches, that church can be a formal thing. You know, it can still be uh, a formal uh, entity without the life of God. You know, because uh, the word of God has not been given precedence, and it's just, it's, it's, uh, it continues to exist as a. As an entity, it's there as an institution, and and so on. Uh, I've not come to the notes yet, Charles. It's I think um, well, it should be. Uh, we are going to look at chapter five today, which will be page fifteen. Okay, so we're still just reviewing um, last class. So, yeah. So, um, um, so 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 that is the um, so the reason for. You know, the reiterating that that uh, uh, one, uh, if one is to be a preacher, one is to be a preacher bearing fruit, and uh, he needs to be a born again believer. Um, another thing that we see is that uh, a natural man does not receive the things of God. Okay, we see that in First Corinthians, and uh, we see that um, uh, the so these truths are actually spiritually discerned, and. Uh, and they have to be spiritually discerned and quickened by the Spirit of God. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, uh, you know First Corinthians chapter two and uh, verse uh, you know verses thirteen and fourteen. Okay, the things that we also speak, um, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of uh, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, right? Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, um, so and then we looked at the other things, right? Uh, like a person needs to be spirit filled, spirit taught, which means knowing um, uh, how to be led by the Spirit of God or journeying with the Spirit of God, being obedient to the Spirit of God, um, uh, not only just baptized and filled with the Spirit, and uh, but also uh, to be led by the Spirit, to make our choices um, or to yield uh, and make choices based on the leading of the Spirit. 
okay and uh, called commissioned by god you know you have uh, uh, you have a clear call okay this is what you've called for this is what you called to do and and um, and we know that some of these things are progressive but however you you know that okay this this is in this season of life this is where you are uh, we are you are called and this is what you are um, you know doing right now so um, so that uh, and then a person of prayer okay uh, a character and then a person of prayer a student of the word a person using the gifts okay so these are some things that that are overlapped by other um, other uh, theologians who, who list the same thing right um, so uh, to sum up it would be, and put it in simple words it would be uh, a man or woman of god a person a student of the word a person of character a person of prayer and a person of ability ability to teach okay so we can also build on that so so the thing is this that these are qualities that we can develop in our in ourselves like we we see that okay i maybe i'm lacking in this then i can you know look into it and say okay i i need to develop you know i need to develop this so i need to give invest more time and develop this and right? so we can do that okay um right so let's look at uh, chapter 5 which is um the ministry of the word okay the ministry of the word and the importance of it so we see that uh, god's word is powerful okay god's word is alive god's word is a truth okay and um, yeah I and mean, as students of the word we we refer to the bible we check the bible we see this and we've experienced the power of the truth of god's word right uh, looking at um, hebrews chapter 4 uh very clearly describes what the word of god is like hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 for the word of god is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so that's uh, um it's hebrews 4 and verse 12 So this is what God's word is. Um, it it is alive. It is powerful. It's living, and therefore the minister of God, or the one who's communicating uh, the 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 message, uh, needs to do so from the word of God. Okay, uh, because this is what God's word is. It's 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 li- alive. It's powerful. It's it pierces. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. So the truth of that, you know. Pierces us even to the division of the soul and the spirit, um, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So I'm I'm really able to know um, based on the word of God, because God God's word is my reference. I'm able to know. Okay, I'm able to make that distinction. Okay, this is of my soul. This is of my thought. Uh, this is just a soulish thing, and this is of the spirit. It's much deeper. You're able to even make that distinction because of the. word of god if the word of god is in us and it's you know uh, we are our mind is renewed to the word of god so um powerful alive and we minister and god works by the word of god by his word right um so he operates through the word you say okay why why do you say that right again if you look at um, you know hebrews 2 and um, let's say we we see uh, read verses 3 and 4 hebrews 2 verses 3 and 4 i'm sorry these are not in the notes um okay so we see how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him god also bearing witness both with signs and wonders with varying various miracles and gifts of the spirit according to his own will okay so what is he bearing bearing witness to is is bearing witness to the message that was preached the what is spoken is bearing witness testifying to it with the power the message is borne witness or being testified to with the demonstration of the 
power of God. So God works. He testifies to the word that is spoken, the word that is preached. He's careful to watch over the word to perform it, as we see in another place. Right. So he, um, the onus is on us to to again come back, uh, or you know, if we have wandered off, to come back to the word of God, to make the word of God a reference point, to to share the truth that is in the Word of God. Of course, we we might do it in a very you know we might do it in very creative ways. We might do it in you know as per the uh, audience, right? How young or how old they are, or uh, we might you know uh, present it in different ways. But the essence of it, right? The the content needs to be the truth of God's word and God's word itself, right? How how it is. Um, yeah. So let's look at a few uh, scriptures here. Let's let's say if you look at Isaiah fifty five. And verse verses ten and eleven talks about um, uh, the word of God, right? Isaiah fifty-five. Um, okay, verse ten. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Okay, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it or the purpose for which i release that word whether it's a creative word whether it's a healing word whether it's a delivering word whether it's you know god is saying that this is this is how my word this is the nature of my word Right, it it goes forth, it brings change, uh, and the purpose for which that word I release, it God says, uh, it will not return void. It will not re uh, return without fulfilling that. Okay, so uh, he's talking to, about the word. Uh, Ephesians, uh, like Hebrews four, you know, we saw it's alive and powerful and so on. Let's look at um, uh, one more one more verse, which is First uh, Thessalonians seven verse thirteen. Um, First Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. Um, let me just look at that. Okay. Um, it says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So the word of God working effectively, and there's another ingredient, which is faith, right? which uh, effectively working in you who believe. But the basic substance or the basic material is the word of God. Uh, word of God, you know, released or spoken and, and, uh, and, and the power of it and the transformative power of the word of God being experienced by the person who believes, who receives and who believes because God works, God performs. He watches over his word to perform it, right? And, uh, and the beautiful thing is that, um, you know, God has chosen us human beings to be communicators of the word, right? So it, it comes out through human personality, Right, it uh, it comes out through human personality, uh, and it's uh, delivered creatively. Nevertheless, when it's God's word, and uh, the Spirit of God confirms it with the power of God, then you know the 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 end result is fruitfulness, or end result is that this this effectiveness, right? Um, and the objective is that we share the word so that they will be. You know, it's not that, oh, I share it, or oh, let me get it done and over with, but it's it's shared with the intention uh, as purposed by God that he wants to see change you know, uh, in people's lives and it wants to add to people's lives. It could be, the purpose could be, you know, manifold. It could be add something, it could be to remove something, you know, uh, because the word of God is that. You know, it, it can to break down something. Um, very interesting, right? I'm sure you would have seen this verse, Jeremiah 23 and verse 29. Okay, Jeremiah 23, um, 23 and uh, verse 29. 
to God describing how his word is. Right? He's, he's saying, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So he's saying, is not my word like a fire? A fire, you know, there's immediately there is change. Uh, you see it, very visible. It's burning and burning away something, maybe purifying something. And, uh, and that's how God's word is. So God is saying, is not my word like fire that burns? And he's also saying, you know, is and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So God's word is like a hammer. And when the hammer hits the rock, a rock is hard, but the hammer is harder. When the hammer hits the rock, it breaks that down into pieces. But, you know, there's a difference, right, in, in, uh, in the way the hammer works and the way the fire works. The end result is different. Um, and also we see that a hammer, maybe maybe we have to swing the hammer a couple of times, right? We might have to wheel the hammer and swing it a couple of times, right? And not give up and persist on swinging the hammer, persist on using the hammer. But we can be sure that it could be the highest of the mountain, but, you know, if you're going to swing at it, if you're not going to give up, and uh, it's going to be a rub. Okay. Um, so God is saying that his word is like this. It's... Uh, it's like a hammer. It's like a. It's like a fire. Okay. So, um, and the beautiful thing is that he has chosen us to wield the hammer. He has chosen us to light the fire, uh, to spread the fire through his, through his word, right? Uh, and through the foolishness of preaching, God chooses to. You know, uh, God is just. Um, uh, you know, uh, kind of established that this is how the gospel will be preached, right? Through the foolishness of preaching, the gospel will be spread. Um, so as human vessels, as uh, frail as we are, uh, as, you know, with all the limitations of personality and so on, God still chooses to use us as his mouthpiece, right? Um, scripture talks about how we are the spokesperson, we are the ambassadors of God and called for the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors of Christ, right? And that's just who, who we are. Um, literally, you know, if you look at, uh, since we are in Jeremiah, we can just come back to chapter one. Um, Jeremiah chapter one. And God's saying uh, to, he's encouraging Jeremiah, verse four, says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah's response is, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. I'm a young person. I, I cannot speak. Um, obviously, he's comparing himself to someone who can and so on. Like, but, but the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, but you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Okay, and do not be afraid of their faces, uh, for I am with you to deliver you. So he's saying, you know, don't be afraid of their faces, don't be afraid of their expressions, don't don't be intimidated by any of that. I'm here to deliver you. Verse 9 and 10, very interesting. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. To root out, to pull down, to destroy, throw down, to build and to plant. Literally, you know, what the hammer, what he was talking about, the hammer and the fire and, and also to establish and to build, right? Not just to pull down, but to establish and to build. And he's saying, I have put my words in your mouth. So he's looking to us, be people who would speak his word, like who will communicate his truth. Okay. Uh, so we receive it from the throne of God. We receive it from the heart of God and we share it. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to us in the sense, okay, uh, you know, do I share this now? I see these people and they are so happy. And Lord, you're saying that, you know, somebody is sad and then, uh, you know, somebody needs to be revived. And uh, Lord, do I say that? But he knows the hearts of people and he gives us the word. He puts the word in our hearts, in our mouths, so that we might uh, speak that, 
right? And we will see things happen, things change. So, so praise God for that, right? So he he uses us as uh, as uh, human uh, mouthpieces uh, to be communicators of His word. And the word does many things um, to to a person, to uh, the life of a believer. So, uh, just thought we'll take some time to look at. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you've written. I mean, have you read that um, uh, the um, the publication, the book uh, called uh, "God's Word: The Miracle Seed," right? Uh, and you can actually check that out um, in, in on the website and probably download it. I'll uh, you know maybe I'll put it in the classwork section also. Um, but the thing is that uh, it just describes the Word of God how God's word is the foundation. And, and the reason we are looking at it is because, um, you know, we can preach on many things. Uh, we can preach on many things which catch our fancy. We can preach, uh, you know, um, uh, we can communicate many things. We can share many things, interesting things. Uh, and uh, But if you're not led by the spirit and if the truth of God's word you know, I'm just saying that because it's not just we go and shoot down people with scripture, you know, da, 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 okay, John 3.16, da, 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 and then just, you know, it's not that, but it's the conveying the truth of scripture. Uh, if you're not doing that, then there is really no transformative power, right? So for us to be word-based, okay, for our worldview uh, to be shaped by word so that it's a word view right? a world view is the word view okay really uh, I, that's a journey that all of us uh, would need to make yeah, and uh, you know that's a journey that uh, uh, that would really result in greater maturity that's a journey that will uh, result in um, you know a life of victory even uh, that we are not spiritually up and down up and down because our life is centered around the word of god right and and of course i'm talking about the, the written, written scriptures and uh, our life is centered around that our choices are uh, revolve around that right so we is greatly esteem the word of god that it takes that precedence in our lives um and that's something that uh, you know uh, that's a journey that uh, all of us need to make. And that's something that will really, you know, you know when you meet a believer who is, um, who is word-based or who's word-centric, right? Whose worldview is really the wor word view. And, um, and you can actually spot that very easily, very quickly, right? So let's look at uh, some of the other truths that are there. Uh, about the word okay just to reiterate the fact that the importance of that okay so uh you know luke chapter 24 verse 27 we see a very interesting uh, all that i'm sharing is from uh, a little bit of you know uh, some of it i'm just uh, sharing from the from the book so you can you know check that out it's called um, uh, god's word uh, the miracle seed right so yeah the god's word the miracle seed so you can look look it up and download it. Um, so Luke 24, 27, uh, it, it refers to the, um, the conversation Lord Jesus has with the disciples. It's, uh, you know, they're walking from Emmaus, right? They're just going towards, uh, from Jerusalem, they're going to Emmaus, and then he's walking with them. And uh, Luke 24, 27 says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning Itself, okay, something wonderful, you know. Jesus, the Eternal Word, uh, who is now the, you know, because John chapter one says, um, you know, in the beginning was the Word, referring to the eternal past, right? Um, the Eternal Word, being the incarnate Word, you know, becoming flesh and walking with people, with them, and quoting the the written Word. Right. He's, he's just opened up the scriptures and he's expounded to them all these things concerning himself. And I just, you know, I always think I'd love to listen to that. You know, if in heaven there's a podcast, if in heaven, you know, that's one thing that I'd love to hear, uh, you know, and listen. So here we see, you know, this kind of, a, that the, the living word himself, the incarnate word himself used the 
written word and that was uh, that wasn't the only place we see that as he's baptized and uh, you know as he's um, is led by the spirit to the wilderness to face the enemy and overcome the temptation in doing so also the eternal word who became the incarnate word is referring to the written word and he's refuting every temptation right um, so we see that so that is how the lord is teaming okay uh, the word and that is the power of god's word okay um and again i just want to say you know it, it's not that the, the pages are you know sometimes we you know we drop it and then we take it and kiss it and all that as a ritual thing uh, okay but the thing is it's not like a it's not like a cross which you you know use to fend off dracula you know just like in the movies but really it's the the word the truth which is there which is uh, life changing and god witnesses testifies to this word and he 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 testifies uh, witnesses with the demonstration of power okay so let's look at a few other words um, people who were in awe you know like there's like the psalmist psalm 119 and verse 18 says uh, open my eyes that i may see wondrous things from your law okay open my eyes so uh, the word of god it's really like uh, several windows you know if you look at it every book every chapter you know you open that window and it gives us revelation from revelation about the the author revelation about god about his heart so it's really a window into god you know to look at him to uh, and 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 go wow and say god this is who you are this is what you are right so uh, he says open my eyes i, I want to see you know open my eyes Lord. i see it i read it but really open my spiritual eyes you know i want to see it for what it is i want to see you for who you are that i may see wondrous things from your law so uh, you know it it leads to a relationship with god right so uh, scripture really you know uh, need not be a dull boring exercise that we read but really it connects us it it uh, uh, and and with god with the heart of god because we see who god is we see the revelation of uh, you know the beauty of uh, his character and nature and and immediately you know in your heart there is praise right you see something and it's like the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd and and immediately you know something stirs within and you just begin to worship and thank god lord i thank you that you are the lord and you're my shepherd and you're my shepherd lord leading me guiding me nurturing me feeding me uh you're my shepherd protecting me and you are mine lord personally you're mine right so um so it it leads to a relationship like the word of god it's not just uh, you know uh, dry theology or some you know something that's there it leads to a relationship and the word of god of course is our pattern it's our standard okay psalm says again psalm 119 the whole chapter psalm 119 is about the word right several it, it talks about the precepts the, the principles the law and several words um, he uses referring to the word of god right um psalm 119 and verse 133 direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me you know, direct my steps um let your word be uh, my guide let your word be my standard um let your word be the pattern of my life right uh, direct my um, uh, steps um another thing that we see uh, exhortation in scripture is colossians 3 and verse 16 okay um, so we just going through different scripture today and um, looking at uh, all this um um and how first of all there are so many verses about the word exhorting the believer encouraging the believer uh, i mean uh, uh, warning the believer etc right we see uh, uh, okay colossians 3:16 let the word of god word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the lord let the word of christ dwell in you abide in you stay in you richly right um so we are to abide in christ and the word of christ uh, is to dwell in us and uh, the lord jesus also you know say the same thing if my words abide in you you will ask 
what you desire and, and it will be you know given so the uh, the, the importance of um, the word abiding in us so so the thing is that um, this is something that uh, uh, you know that that is for all believers to to hunger after to thirst after and uh, and really to uh, to allow the word of god to allow a rich deposit of god's word in our hearts and uh, not to hold back to allow a rich deposit so that we can teach and uh, uh, and and of course this is the outflow overflow of that teaching and uh, admonishing and also you know songs coming out right psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace to our god right when there's a you know rich deposit of god's word okay um, so some of the other things that we see is that god's word is a carrier of god's power so why is this so much insist insistence on ministering the word of god and you know the thing is that god's word uh, carries his power you know, it's his word let's look at a few um, scriptures here hebrews 11:3 says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god okay so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible so is referring to the creator work of god uh, right there in genesis 1 where god spoke uh, thank you dinesh yeah that's the word that's the link so god spoke and things happened god spoke um, things came into being okay so hebrews 11 uh, the right of hebrews in verse 3 is testifying to that pointing to that and saying by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which were seen you know all that i touch and see something these are tangible these were made by things which were invisible right so spiritual matter or something that is supernatural how was it framed it was framed by the word of god just imagine so the same god you know who spoke those words he gives jeremiah the words to speak he puts those words in his mouth and, he, and he's saying you know by this you will root out by this you will build by this you will you know pull down that's the power of god's word you know um sometimes uh, we wonder you know the, the most powerful thing is some idea which is stuck in our head right uh thoughts strongholds because outside things we can somehow in the physical in the natural we can somehow change we can do it but if it is inside a thought pattern a stronghold that is what really drives the action right now and for a believer a believer is born again uh, the roman 6 says that the body of sin has been done away with you know there's no more his body is not is he's not empowered by sin anymore but he's a slave of righteousness you know all that reality is there but in his mind he is still carnal right if the thoughts there are still carnal then the behavior is going to be carnal okay. but on the other hand right if the mind is going to be renewed made new renovated by the word of god then there's going to be change and not just change but transformation metamorpho meaning the the larva has become a butterfly you know there's no absolutely no you know no uh, i mean there's no comparison to how it was and what it has become comparison to how it started and the finished product no change i mean there's no comparison you know drastic change transformation so that's the power of god's word even those most stubborn things in our minds you know those stubborn fears the most stubborn of strongholds which keep us in bondage to addictive patterns of sinful behavior or our patterns of um, our patterns of thought which which lead to behavior that we are not but the word of god can change transform that the can change transform that right so so the so word of god is really a carrier of his power and if it is if the word of god is received believed upon 
you know, First Thessalonians 2, verse 13, the verse that we saw just now, is, is works effectively in those who believe, meaning it's, it's going to be operative. It's going to be effective. It's going to be operative. It's begin to, it's going to start working in those who believe. Right? Um, so, uh, so that's uh, that's the thing. So go back to the word, you know, um, use the word of God and let our content, let the preaching be centered around the word of God. And um, well, you can make it as creative as possible, but don't dilute that. Don't compromise on the word of God, because this is uh, this is what it is. Right. Um, uh, yeah. I and mean, we can talk about um Everything that's around us, we can talk about, you know, uh, what's happening, and but but tie it back to the Word of God. Come back to the Word of God, and let the Word of God be that uh, shape our worldview, you know, uh, and that's so very important. Okay, the other thing that we see is this parable, which is in Mark chapter four, that the Word of God is a seed. The Word of God is a seed. And that's the title of the book, The Word of God, The Miracle Seed, meaning the Word of God is powerful, it's uh, supernatural, it's it's got power, uh, is a carrier of God's power, and the Word of God is a seed, which means that the Word of God, when it's planted, when it's rooted, when it's nurtured, then it bears, it bears what it's supposed to bear, brings about change. Right, so it can be it, it, it's thirty, sixty, and hundred. So we we look at the you know that parable. So we see that um, really the sower goes out to sow. Uh, I think uh, all of us have read that. Um, and uh, some seed fall, uh, fall by the wayside, and the birds come and take it. Some fall, fall on thorny ground. Um, there's not much earth to it. There's not much soil, so it springs up, and uh, and then when the sun comes out, it's scorched again, scorched, and then dries out, withered. And some seed fall among thorns, and the seed, and the thorns grow up, they choke it, and uh, it yields no crop. And the other seed fall on good ground and yield crop, uh, and giving an increase many fold, like 30, 60, and 100. So, and the Lord uh, taught this parable and gave the explanation of the parable, and then he says, you know, the, the, um, uh, and, he's, and he give, gives something, you know, before he explains, he says, you know, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the other parables? You know, he's saying, you know, this parable is key to unlock all the parables because it's about the word and the if, and the work of the uh, word in a person's life. If a person will receive it, and if it's on good ground, and uh, and so he's saying, you know, this is key. You know, this is uh, this is like a key which will unlock all the other parables. You need to understand this. So he, he begins to explain and he says, the sower sows the word, which means the seed is the is the word, right? The seed is the word. And and look at this. The seed is the seed of the word is so precious. The seed of the word is so, or or in other words, uh, the birds of the air, they are referred to Satan, right? Um, Satan immediately comes. Immediately comes and takes away because Satan knows the value of God's word. You know, sometimes I think it's knows the value of God's word more than the believer, right? Satan comes, takes away, knowing fully well that if a believer is going to receive the uh, seed of God's word in his or her heart, and if it's going to be nurtured, then that person is going to wreak havoc in Satan's kingdom, in the kingdom of darkness. Their lives are going to be set free. Uh, the believer himself, uh, uh, herself is going to be full of faith and power and unstoppable. No matter what is happening, they're going to be focused on the word of God, the promises of God, what he has spoken. So they're going to keep going, just like how we see the early church and how, you know, like Paul saying, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, that, that kind of a person is unstoppable. Right? What will you do? To live is Christ, to die is gain. And people testify and saying that these guys who turn the world upside down, they have come here also. And who are these people? Well, not some great people, some everyday folks who gave themselves undeservedly. Right? So, um, 
yeah so we see uh, so we see that word is received this comes after a word signals the value of the word right but when it is sown on stony ground there's a glad as well that's god's word fantastic wonderful i receive it and then and then there is persecution and there is no endurance and you know it it just becomes ineffective you know, because you just let go of it right and sometimes there are things like the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh pride of life you know it talks about um, the cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches and desires for other things they also choke the word because we take our eyes off uh, life does not become word centric uh, in instead it has become maybe centered around lust some centered around something else that is feeding us right so the desire Uh, the appetite for the word uh, is is way down because there's some other appetite which we are nurturing and which we are full, trying to fulfill right trying to satiate so uh, we're going after that and then obviously these thorns these things they choke the word but those on good ground hear the word accept it and bear fruit okay so the word of god really uh, is, a, is is a miracle seed it's the it's uh, it was sown and it bears fruit and and um, you know if you look at the uh, uh, the 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 book you know it talks about what kinds of seed can be sown you know it's it's wonderful if you can just uh, read through it right personally you'll be edified and and of course it's something that you can apply uh, in your own lives also but uh, the the reason um, you know just sharing that is that it's um, it talks about uh it it really helps us to change um the way we minister okay change the way we minister there's another section on meditating of god's word okay how do you meditate on it how do we um you know spend time thinking deeply about it and how the word of god needs to have place in our in our mind we need to have that mind space for the word of god and how we can visualize it you know Uh, and like how we studied in faith how we need to speak it think about it speak it uh, declare it and so on so um, there's a section on meditation and you know uh, it's it's great if you can just go through that but um, yeah so um, i just just want to uh, you know uh, just 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 want to just mention that so that we know the importance of god's word in the way we minister so um uh, so the uh, so we esteem god's word we receive god's word we minister the word of god because that has power to change people's lives right so the ideas that you are communicating the ideas that you're sharing that um when it's sown in 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 people's hearts then it bears fruit right so uh, just a few thoughts on meditation right meditating god's word um Uh, the question we need to ask is does does my mind do i have mind space for uh, the word of god you know do i retain uh, god's word outside of class or outside of church or outside of the time that i spend do i retain god's word in my mind do i make space for the word of god in my mind it's very very important because um, now that's going to change the way we live our lives okay so we look at joshua chapter 1 and um, again a very familiar place um, joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 um god giving instruction to joshua and um, and uh, the the reason for his instruction is that uh, it's of course again leadership it's a great task uh, responsibility and uh, god speaks to him moses is not there now it's after the death of moses god is uh, you know and he, he and he and the thing that he instills in him is this the word right is a great responsibility it's uh, they've grown to be a big nation no and there are people who grumble who complain and joshua has seen it first hand right but he cannot turn back and look at moses anymore because moses is not there and the lord wants him to be strong he says you be strong you don't be afraid be of good courage and he gives him this instruction this book of law shall not depart from your mouth make it part of your speaking you shall meditate on it day and night make it part of your thinking let your mind have space for 
the truth of scripture just think about it think about what i've spoken think about what i've read uh, what i've written think about it let it be part of your thinking okay and that's very very important because what you think as a man thinks in his heart so he shall be right so shall he be so um it's going to change revolutionize our thinking you know when uh, if it's going to be part of our thinking it's going to completely revolutionize our thinking the way we look at ourselves changes right no more insecurity no more fear uh, it's it's going to completely change the way we look at ourselves uh, the way we relate to god is going to change and we've been studying all that in christ promises um it's it changes completely why because uh, my mind uh, has the space to retain uh what i've got it's become part of my thinking now it's become part of my thinking you know it's just cleansing my thinking cleansing my imagination so uh, i don't know sam last class you were asking about you know some of these things childhood things that uh, you know how can we change and how can we you know come out of that um, is sam here uh, sam is okay i'm not sure sam asked that question so this is one of the things right the very important things that we um a love the truth retain the truth in our thoughts um so that it changes our imagination and uh, what we think it's going to change our speaking it's going to change our behavior and everything right so he says meditate in it day and night okay and uh, okay it's not it's not enough to just speak it or uh, meditating on it but he says you may observe to do according to all that is written in it now you obey it carry it out carry out the instruction it may not always be comfortable it may not always be convenient but you carry it out observe be careful to observe to uh, to do according to all that is written in it then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success now this is again i just want to say that you know it's based on relationship it's not something that is you know uh detached from relationship with god right it's based on relationship as we go journey with god he quickens the word he he you know he'll point out certain things to us he'll highlight certain things to us and then we we make it part of our thinking we make it part of our speaking and doing right so it is in um, you know relationship and uh, it is in a walk of intimacy with god that we do this it's not just a detached formula right so when we minister we minister the word of god that is our content that is our message okay and god will give the creativity to present it in different ways and um but we this is the essence of it like this is the foundation right okay so we'll stop here um you guys have a great weekend and we'll catch up on monday okay god bless thank you Thank you, Boston.